Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I make content about buying and selling Pokemon cards. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, press the like button. So in this video, I'm going to be processing some ultra rares because I desperately need to process a lot of them buying and buying, but I need to sell. So I'll be processing some of these. I'm going to show you guys or give you guys an update on what's been happening with me and reselling. And I'm also going to uh, show you guys a little bit about the process of me sorting and listing cards on TCG Player. So let's get started. And as I'm, you guys know and mentioned recently, I've been listing a lot more cards. So I've been buying these here, um, which are my four row box counts. And there's five row box counts that hold a lot more cards. The five row box counts hold 7,000. The four row box counts holds about uh, 3,500. But in my personal opinion, just by handling the, the boxes, it feels more sturdy for the four bo row box counts. So I use those and it fits better in my racks. I can use two of them side by side. Otherwise I'll just use one um, five row box, box count. So I've been doing that. I've been uh, putting them together because they come flat and then you put them together. I'll show you guys a visual hopefully here on the screen. And I have been buying some more. I feel like that's all I've been doing lately is buying, buying, and buying. I am going to be listing today, but I bought a lot from a viewer that's probably watching this video. Appreciate you guys watching, wanting to sell, reaching out to me. And they have 2,000 of vintage cards. Some of them are hollow, some of them are not. Vintage cards from 2000 to 2006. 2,000 of them I bought for uh, $1,425. 75% off market value. Um, and then another, I'm picking up another lot today in a couple hours. And this was a seller that I saw yesterday as I was getting my other lots. I went to my Facebook um, group that I'm part of that buy, buy and sell. And I saw someone was selling. I offered 75% off uh, market value. And they were like, oh, I don't get off work until three. But she texted me today and we're going to be, I'm going to go over down south again, pick up this master set and some hollows, thousand hollows and a master set all for 300. And the master set again, got 75% off TCG player and the hollows. I do my, um, 30 for a thousand bulk rate. So I'm going to be looking into that. And like I mentioned, I have a lot, a lot to process. So whenever I'm not buying, I'm going to really be focusing on just listing. And as I do that, I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of how I do that. I go about, um, getting all the cards randomly and, and a stack. And I try to figure out what era they're from, what, what sets arrows. Most of the time, 90% of the cards are going to be from sword and shield, scarlet and violet. So I have two organizing tins that I repurposed. They were usually, they were for my storage, but I repurposed to organize. So I run it through the sets tins first, try to put all the cards in one set. Um, this tin has all the sets in an era, all the sets from Scarlet and Violet, all the sets from Sword and Shield. And then once I have a good amount from a set, then I run it through the second tin that has all the alphabetical letters. And then I can group these cards together. I used to do it, by type, but then I found that's a bit that did double the sorting if I did it alphabetically the second time around and narrows it down so much that you don't really need to do any more sorting. So that's a little bit about what I do. You don't even have to use these trays that I have. You have to create this system. You can, there's a bunch of sorting trays out there. Any of them will really work. I just prefer the ones that I have because I repurposed it and it actually works really well. I can move a lot faster because I can just plop the card in there and move around. So that's a little bit about uh, what's been happening with me. Oh, and another update is that I dropped the prices of my minimums of my cards, lower end cards from 20 cents, non hollows to 17 cents. And then all the hollows are now 20 cents. So before I had all the hollows at 25 and the regular uh, non hollows at 20, but I dropped it down and I've been seeing a lot more sales. So. I'll probably keep it that way. It seems more more reasonable. Maybe I'll do the non-hollows at 15 cents and then keep the 
hollows at 20 cents or even if i want to get more competitive put them to like 18 cents so uh, i definitely see how you can get more sales if you lower the price and it's still very it makes it still makes much sense to me to ship out these cards at, the, at these prices so i probably keep it around that price range for the minimums all right if you guys like this video subscribe press the like button i appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video later